In this video, we'll be taking a more detailed look at the mixer inside of Mixcraft to learn more about its features and functions. At the core of every mix session is the mixer itself, and Mixcraft offers many powerful features inside the mixer, even allowing you to set up the mixer based on your own personal preferences to optimize your workflow. Let's begin by talking about customizing the mixer layout as it's pretty straightforward to do. To customize the mixer layout, we'll go up here to the upper left and click on the Mixer Panel Preferences icon here. Within the Mixer Panel Preferences, you'll see the different available options, and you can actually click and reorder these by clicking the handles over to the left-hand side. Let's begin by adding the Parametric EQ and Frequency View, and then we'll remove the Basic EQ by unchecking it. If you've customized your mixer and found a setup you like, you can also check the box here to make it the default for new projects. Then, once you're ready, you can hit OK. As you can see here now, we've added in our parametric EQ, removed the basic EQ, and we've also added the frequency view down here at the bottom. Let's begin breaking down the mixer by working our way down. We'll skip over the parametric EQ for now, as we'll be taking a look at that in a moment. At the top here, we have our send control, and what this represents is the amount of signal being sent to the send, and you can see this is on every channel. The name of the send track will also change the name of this knob here. As you can see, it's currently named Snare Verb, and the track itself is named Snare Verb. Let's go in and rename this to just Verb, and you'll see that the name in the mixer updates here. Below that, you'll see we have a compressor, and this is a very simple one-knob style compressor. This allows for really quick and easy compression to control the dynamics of a signal, and we'll explore the topic of compression more in a future video. For a quick overview, let's solo out the drum bus here and just start dialing in the compression. As you can hear, the compressor is a nice and simple way to control the difference between the loud parts and the quiet parts of a signal. Below that, we have the drive knob, which is a simple one-knob drive control. What this does is add a smooth analog-style saturation to the signal. If we dial this in on the drum mix, you'll hear that we can add just a bit of heat on lower settings or go towards more aggressive distortion at higher settings. Skipping over the parametric EQ here, we can see next we have the effects section, which allows us to manage and edit our effects on our tracks. The effects can also be managed with the FX button here, which will open the effect list, and then you can edit your effects in that window as well. Finally, down here at the bottom, we have the visualizer tools. The blue window here is the oscilloscope, which represents the playing waveform of the channel. Then, below that with the yellow line here, we have the frequency view. This shows the frequency spectrum of the channel and can be useful to help make better mixing decisions and get an idea of where your tracks are sitting in the mix. If we give the entire mix a play here, you'll see that every channel has its own oscilloscope and frequency analyzer. Finally, to close this video off, let's examine the Parametric EQ. The Parametric EQ is a slightly more advanced version of the default 3-band EQ inside of the Mixcraft Mixer. Parametric EQs allow for more flexibility in how the sound is treated, allowing you to make a range of adjustments from more broad EQ cutting or boosting to more surgical, precise control. If we take a look at the mid-bands here, we'll see that a Parametric EQ works based on three different controls. Gain, which represents the amount of boost or cut being applied, Frequency, which controls the frequency that's targeted by that filter, and the Q or resonance here, which controls how steep the slope of the filter is. The high and low bands also offer a toggle button, which you can see here. This toggle changes the filter type between a shelf and a bell curve. The shelf setting affects all frequencies above the cutoff for the high band and all frequencies below for the low band. The bell setting, on the other hand, only affects frequencies near the cutoff point, similar to the two mid bands. The only difference between the bell curve and the mid-bands is that the bell curve response doesn't offer a Q or resonance control. The parametric EQ is great for more precise tonal control over a sound. Let's quickly use it on the drum bus mix.
At this point, you should have a good understanding of how to utilize the mixer in Mixcraft, as well as understand the basics of parametric EQ, compression, drive, and adding effects, as well as reordering and customizing the mixer to your own personal preferences. That wraps everything up for this video, so thanks for watching.